Have I ever had three boxes? I don't know. Build a pyramid. In boxing classes, sometimes they have you knock down things like this. Well, I would confuse it with ninja training because I am a ninja. May or may not have peaked. Astro Malachite. Okay, so these are probably gonna be like really cool, bright. They're gonna have some really cool designs. I suspect all of these could be like a carving. I don't suspect to see any jewelry today. Azure Malachite, it's kind of like a, a hybrid of Azurite and Malachite. So it's probably gonna be bright blue and bright green. All three of them. It could be cabochons, it could be carved. It's like two substances, Azurite and Malachite. It's like, Azurite is blue, azure. Malachite, Spanish, dude. Yeah, azul is blue in Spanish, azure, right? Maybe there's a little connection there. I just, I know it's gonna be bright colors and with this awful box color and boring white background, I think we need something. I guess that is kind of cool. It like focuses on the gems and the host. Okay, I was right, yay. Okay, so box number one. That blue right there, it, I mean, that doesn't look, it doesn't look real. What I love about azure, right? is that when you look at it, it's so blue, it is so blue. It's like this, the bluest blue, the cobalt blue I've ever seen. But that blue, like you don't even expect that to come from Mother Nature. I would have thought that that blue was created in a lab, but it wasn't. And those green patches, that's gonna be the malachite. I was expecting to see a little bit more banding with the malachite, but you know, maybe another piece we will see that. How was anyone ever sad looking at that? Look how bright it is. I love that color. Okay, so let's move on. What? Okay, another piece of Azure Malachite. This one looks a little bit more like I was expecting it to. You can see the bright blue, but some of that Malachite right there, you can see the banding, and that's what Malachite is known for. It's known for like, you know, green and like lighter green tones of banding in the piece. So Malachite, you can see right there, those green bands. That is what you find in, you know, that is what's typical of Malachite. It looks like a really, really light green and a medium green, um, and that's completely typical. Right there, you can see another really good spot as well. Ready? Oh, yay, this is what I was expecting. Okay, so Azure Malachite right here. Again, you can see that bright blue, and you can see the green banding, and then this looks like there's a little bit more matrix in it. I like this piece, it looks... So what I like about this piece is that you can see the matrix, and I think this would, you know, you're definitely not gonna set either of these in jewelry, but I like this piece. I think that could be a cool ring or you know, a pendant. I just, I like how you can see both colors and you can see some of the matrix. I think that's neat. The matrix is like the host rock. That's basically what the stone is growing in. So right there you can see, you know, that looks like rock. You see where I'm pointing to? Like the back right there, that would be considered matrix. Matrix on here, I would expect would be like this part right here. That's like what it's growing in. Imagine this. I mean like this is in the wall. And you get to see that just poking out at you. I, I think mining mineral specimens would be absolutely fascinating. I mean, because this is natural, guys. Imagine just pulling that out of the ground. I think it's absolutely fascinating. From my experience in mining, you wouldn't, I haven't just, I haven't just seen like big old pockets of stones. They're usually smaller. But you know, stones like muscovite, you know, I've seen large, large amounts of in a mine. But you know, this, I suspect, was just like a you know a small pocket of it right there. That kind of looks like a piece of quartz to me. I don't want to side ID anything though. So. In gemology, you don't side ID. You need to test stuff. Don't side ID because you know if you have a blue stone, there's there's so many things that could be blue or red. You know, for a long time before we had the practices of modern gemology, stones were identified based on their color. So for instance, there are um, spinels that are in the crown jewels that were thought to be ruby just because they're a bright red. Gemology and especially mother nature is so good at tricking people. I get tricked every single day here. That's why you don't side ID. Plus science is fun. Testing stuff is fun. We've seen plenty of blue stones. We've seen aquamarine, sapphire, lapis, um, sodalite, um, azure malachite or azurite. I would never confuse this with a lapis or a sodalite just because it, that color is so bright and it's a pretty, you know, good clue that we see some malachite right there as well. But, you know, before modern gemology, before we had tests, you know, like a, a refractive index or a specific gravity, um, before we were able to look for pleochroism and we, you know, had that knowledge, that gemological knowledge, stones were often identified based on just their color. We're lucky now that we can, you know, learn more and we can dive deeper into the world of gemology and learn, you know, what actually that blue stone is rather than just side ID. On a previous episode, we said that sodalite was, you know, the gemstone that looks like earth. And I think that this looks like earth way more than sodalite does because we have 
blue, you know, that could be like ocean and then green. And this reminds me of Earth far more than Sodalite ever would. Not that Sodalite's not cool. In fact, you should go look at our Sodalite YouTube episode. This is just really bright and I love the colors. These do not look the same. And that is because Azure Malachite has different habits. So for instance, um, stalactite, this to me looks like a stalactite. So it you know grows from the top of a cave. Another habit would be like banding. I don't, and there's not a great example of banding on this. Where can I find banding? Okay, maybe right there, that could be considered banding. You can see a little bit malachite banding, and that's typically how you find it. Um, and then another one of my, I think it's the coolest thing, it's called botryoidal structure, structure, and it literally looks like a bunch of grapes. I'm pretty sure we have a YouTube about that. With Azure Malachite, you're not just gonna get one thing. You're gonna get a, you know, a different, a different mix because there's two different materials coming together and there's different habits. So when you have a piece of azure malachite, you know, with a sapphire, you kind of know what you're going to get. But with azure malachite, you know the colors that you're going to get, but the, the design could be completely different than anything you've ever seen. And that's one of the reasons I like, um, you know, to have the stone in a collection. Coolest thing about azure malachite, copper causes the green in malachite and it also causes the blue in azurite, which I think is just so fascinating because you literally have two different materials growing in one in the same area, and it's one one element that gives them two separately different colors, which you've seen in gemstones before, which I just I think is fascinating. Like chromium, chromium can cause the green in emeralds and the red in rubies. Pretty cool, huh? I don't think I don't. Actually, that could be botryoidal. I think I called that stalactite earlier, but that could be botryoidal. No, because botryoidal is like more, more of like, like um, spherical. This does to me would look more like a, a stalactite, you know, because it's actually like growing down. Botryoidal, it's literally gonna look like a, a, a mound of grapes. Like the, yeah, grape chalcedony. If you want to learn more about grape chalcedony and botryoidal structure, check out the link in our description. I think the best way to display this, I love just solid minerals like this or mineral specimens. I think that's really neat. So that would be an option. I like how it's a little bit bigger. You know, this is something that you could put on a table, on your desk, or a bookshelf. We've talked about home decor in past um, episodes. This is another great idea to use. Another great way to display would be, you know, a, a piece like this, a little bit bigger. You could set this into a pendant, a ring. I mean, really the world is your oyster when it comes to gemology and 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 incorporating these gems into, into your life. You really can't go wrong. You know what that does? It kind of looks like an overhead map of like a, a river or something. You know, like there's the blue and there's the banks that are green and maybe some like desert. I mean, I think, I think these are so cool. It really does remind me of Earth when I look at these. So something really cool about Azure Malachite, you know, obviously it gets its name from Azurite and Malachite, but it's also referred to as Bluebird. And I'm not really surprised why. You can't stop looking at it. I'm forgetting there's a camera there. I'm just looking at my Azure, Azure Malachite. Roughly 4,000 years ago, Malachite was actually mined for its copper in Egypt and Israel. So that's another way that, you know, gemology and these gemstones are incorporated into everyday life. They're needed for copper, which you can probably find in a whole array of things that you use every day. Some notable sources for Azure Malachite are Australia, Chile, Germany, the United States, uh, Namibia, Zambia, South Africa. And if you look at that on a map, that's a pretty impressive spread. You know, for example, Chile and Australia, opposite sides of the world. But what I think, are they on opposite sides of the world though? Because it's only an ocean apart. Think about it this way. You know, you have your big globe. You know, Germany, the distance between Germany and Australia, that's literally half of a, you know, there's a world apart and you still find the same stone and the color is gonna look relatively similar and you're gonna have, you know, some similar habits. And I just, I think that's fascinating because usually we have these hot beds of gems. So like Sri Lanka, Madagascar, Colombia, um, Brazil, you know, you, you'd expect to find gemstones there, but I wouldn't expect to find this in Germany. I wouldn't expect to find this in, in Chile. And I certainly would not think that we have this in the United States. I could be mining this, you know, somewhere in my own backyard. Not that that's ever gonna happen, but the possibility that it's in the United States, I think is absolutely fascinating. You know, we're lucky to have a big bright stone like this. You know, you think sometimes the colors like this are reserved for the hotbeds of the gemological world and they don't have to be. It is this blue, that blue. And it's like, look at, that is that blue. You know, there's that blue is right there. You see that blue right there. I mean, this is three completely different specimens. 
normally I would prefer, you know, something like this, polished, shiny, but today I'm gonna have to change everything I've said in the past and say that, you know, today this is my preference. I like the big colors. I like, I like seeing the matrix. I think this would be a really, really cool piece somewhere in my home one day, like today. Where would I put this? I don't, I think I would put this on my dresser. I have a, um, a shelf in, in my kitchen. Maybe I could put that there. Comment below and tell me where you would put this in your home. I've seen a lot of azromalachite and cabochons, um, you know, maybe cut like this, um, I've beads. I think a necklace made of azromalachite beads would be so cool. I've seen plenty of malachite um, cut like that and used in that in that way. Oh, this is terribly rare. I don't, rarity in the gemology world is, t is tricky unless all factors are the same. Um, you know, it's tough to compare two stones and are you comparing the rarity of color? Are you comparing the, you know, the rarity of finding an, a new production? Are, are you comparing the rarity of gem quality and material coming out of the ground? I mean, it, rarity is a really tough word in this business. Instead of saying, is this rare? You know, are we lucky to have this? Of course, because we're lucky to have any gemstone because A, not only is it tough to get out of the ground, B, it's tough to find, and C, I mean, think of just how fantastic it is that, you know, all of these, all of this recipe came together, that that was even possible in the first place. I'm gonna try to get this on my desk today at work. I wonder, do you think that'll happen? Quick, uh, what's my favorite thing about Azure Malachite? Definitely the color. I like that blue color. And I like the banding. Basically, I just like it all. Let's take a closer look, and I'm gonna pick this one as my favorite because of that color. Um, take a look at the azurite and where the malachite kind of jumps in. Um, see if you can see some banding that we talked about earlier. And then look at the quartz crystals. Aren't those neat? enjoyed today's video as much as I did. It certainly blew me away. Hey, if you don't wanna be green with envy in the future, you should probably like and subscribe. We've got some great stuff coming up and I don't want you to miss out. If you love jewelry and gemstones as much as I am, this is the place to be. I'm all out of gem jokes, I can't think of any more. So why don't you write your best and leave it for me in the comments and maybe you'll see it in a future episode or maybe I'll give you a shout out. Like and subscribe and don't miss out.